views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone to Angel Healing House Radio with myself, Claire Candy Hoff. I do want to start the show today uh, by uh, giving a shout out to a very special person. I, with uh, it being November 15th tomorrow, I wanted to thank my beloved husband, Pete, my wonderful twin flame, a very happy anniversary. Because 14 years ago at Uh, a come as your favorite rock star party that I was invited to. I went to Stevie Nicks and the only Elvis in the party out of a hundred people or more, uh, he was wearing the white, all in one white jumpsuit, the pompadour hairdo, uh, the aviator glasses, and of course the red cape. And uh, when Pete sat at my table, Five hours later, we were still talking, and five days later, he asked to marry me. Two months later, we were married on the beautiful, beautiful beach in Noosa Heads, Queensland, Australia, uh, not far from where we were living, and uh, we have been on our Twin Flame adventure for the last 14 years. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all the laughter. Thank you for all the surprises, and thank you for making this journey uh, extraordinary and uh, helping me to create heaven on earth. I'm so looking forward to the next 14 years of surprises and adventures and so much more laughter. Thank you so much, Pete. So let's get on with this. uh, Let's get on with this. The topic for today, last week's program, healing family relationships. Uh, I gained so I got so many emails and so many comments on how helpful this topic was that the Posse of Angels wish to delve even deeper today into this topic with today's show, which they have entitled Healing Ourselves, Healing Our Past, and Healing Our Ancestors to Heal the Future. Now, they're talking about healing our, not only this present incarnation, 
but helping to heal the, our generational line. Now that we've healed ourselves, we can then help our ancestors to heal. The Posse of Angels have had me speaking much of late of how people from our past are resurfacing in our lives for us to finally deal with any emotions that are still triggering us and making us react. Now, if there are any emotional triggers, it means that we still have not completely resolved our relationship back to just unconditional love and forgiveness and complete non-judgment, or as the Posse of Angels call it, back to the divine core of who we are. If we wish to live a full, abundant, prosperous life and see the fulfillment of our dreams, whether that will show up by living in the perfect desired location, perhaps in another city, another state, or in another country, perhaps by doing the absolutely perfect desired dream job or being with that beloved mate, it will never ever be able to manifest if there's the tiniest bit of negativity and triggers and reactors still within us. And while many of us have focused and centered on healing relationships from our past, the Posse of Angels wish to remind us that there may be others that are making their presence known as their energies contain an important piece of energetic frequency that will either hinder us or help us on our journey forward. Now, the others that the Posse of Angels is referring to is our ancestors, whose energies are infused in our energy field, and they may be causing us to react from emotional triggers that we are totally unaware of that we might be still harboring and perpetuating. Now, it is a time for ancestral and generational healing to take place because many of us are now clear enough energetically and are carrying such high vibrational frequency that we can begin to address our lineage. You know, I am uh, I'm amazed when I go look on YouTube how many uh, uh, psychic counselors there are, intuitive readers, tarot card readers. In just the last two or three years, there just seems to be an absolute explosion with the shift of humanity, how many people are now stepping forward um, with um, I I intuitive uh, counseling and as readers and such. I can tell you when I started to do this professionally 14 years ago when um, I had my angelic walk-in experience and after that I established and created Angel Healing House to step forward in a very third dimensional reality, <laughs> a very 3D world and to present oneself um, doing this work and being professional, it was not a very easy road to tow. Um, and those spiritual warriors that were doing it back then were doing it very tough. So it was a very different world back then. But now uh, it seems to be more accepted with programs like the Long Island Medium and uh, the Young Hollywood Medium, Tyler, I think his name is, and a show actually appeared on public uh, public TV, uh, which was called The Healer, uh, doing work as I do in the field of energy medicine and presenting that uh, very matter-of-factly to, uh, to the public now. So it is a very different world that we have shifted into. It's, and so it's certainly a time for us to address our ancestors and, that, and those previous generations. Now, having personally acknowledged and communicated only unconditional love to all family and friends, I decided to scan my ancestors to see if there were any others along my ancestral line who needed this same acknowledgement, this same healing, and this same unconditional love. And suddenly, <laughs> it was very funny, suddenly the room was filled 
with so many souls who wished to accept help to release their own negative programming and their energies uh, that were attached to this. Now, on this note, the Posse of Angels wishes to remind all of us that just because someone crosses over uh, does not mean that they are immediately issued a halo and a harp. The only thing that is different when we pass from the physical to the non-physical is that we do not have a body for we take any unresolved energies with us, such as anger, bitterness, resentment, regret, judgment, unforgiveness, any of these, those things are still within our energetic makeup. And there's no magic wand, uh, there's no secret wisdom or magic spell that will abracadabra automatically erase our unresolved negative emotions even when we are in spirit, as these can only be resolved by each and every one of us through the energies of unconditional love and forgiveness. You know, before my angelic uh, walk-in experience in 2003, I was a spiritual teacher in heaven, in my school, um, and I instructed many souls on how to finally transform their dark, unresolved energies into the light of unconditional love and forgiveness. And having worked on bringing these issues back into divine alignment, many of those souls, uh, those students of mine across the veil, then chose to incarnate once more to um, into physical form, into a human body, to practically work on those issues in the duality of the earth plane, where they would write the contract of their life, and then they would be veiled from the knowledge of ever writing that contract, and then they would come in and work on those lessons. As I was looking at all the souls that stepped forward to be healed in my ancestral line, my grandmother Sarah, who has been with me constantly as my guardian angel since uh, I was eight years old, that's when she crossed over. Well, she stepped forward and she communicated that it was indeed now time to begin healing our ancestral line. The beliefs of our ancestral line had energetically downloaded genetic codes into us, which then became hidden and they they, um, harbored deep within our cellular memory. These genetic codes worked like that worked like an, an internal guidance system, if you will, that influenced our every behavior through the subtle energy system of the body. In other words, we may have been doing things and we may have been making choices solely because of the energies of the feelings passed on from our ancestors that were downloaded into us regardless as to whether they were beneficial or healthy for us, regardless if we did all the spiritual work in the world, you know, if we went to workshops, if we ourselves were, um, were spiritual teachers, these were like um, uh, magnetic filings that uh, attached themselves to our, the, the way we thought, the way we acted and um and uh, and the way we chose to live our lives in many instances now in this way it was like those who have a history of alcoholism and abuse in their families that are predisposed to choose to have the same addictive behavior uh they may not know why but they are often led into that area unconsciously now as i had this conversation with my grandma, Sarah, about healing our generation and the issues and long-held programming in my past generation, I could clearly see several examples of how both of my parental ancestral lines contributed to limiting beliefs that I owned in my life. For instance, 
one of the belief systems that was perpetuated in my ancestral line. And when I say my ancestral line, I'm speaking about the former soul of Claire Candy that was in the body as I am now Angel Ariel. But for this instance, I'll speak about my ancestral line. Uh, was okay. The first one was that a woman needs to be taken care of by a man in order for her to survive. A woman's purpose was to be supportive, a helpful wife, and a good mother. And she does not need to work if she catches herself a good husband. Now, notice the use of the word catches, like someone would catch a prized fish. <laughs> so this catching a good husband was later changed to catching a rich husband, which programmed the women to believe that just because your husband was rich, well, that negated the fact um, uh, that he was a wife beater, that he was an abuser, an alcoholic, or an adulterous spouse, or, and um, one forgave all if he was rich. A woman's priority was to keep her looks and her figure, keeping the house neat and clean and making sure that her husband and children were well looked after. Uh, she could be a teacher, a nurse, or a secretary, but only until she got married. And then she must give up her work as her duties lied solely in the home. You know, I know this sounds completely Neanderthal, but for many women from that generation who were above the age of 50, this programming was drummed into them. We saw it, in, and it was reinforced in TV programs like Leave it to Beaver. And fa Father Knows Best, it was never Mother Knows Best, it was Father Knows Best and The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. You know, we were also uh, bombarded by print media, which furthered, uh, you know, furthered this idea. And it showed women beautifully dressed with their coiffed hairdos and their pearls, getting excited about a new vacuum cleaner <laughs> or a new cleaning product to make their tubs and showers sparkle to not only be the envy of all their neighbors to have such a shiny bathtub, but to make their husbands so proud of them. With this programming energetically held within my family's belief system, it created some very bombastic chauvinistic men and many abused, frustrated women. Although the women were intelligent, they were very creative and capable. Well, what came along from that um, perpetuation of those energies is they continually sabotaged and undermined their self-worth by making their husbands everything in their life and by belittling themselves, hiding their attributes and their abilities. And while they bought into the belief system that women were less capable than men, Excuse me. With this belief system deeply embedded in a woman's psyche, she may not consciously realize that every time she gets close to succeeding at something, she will create a block or an obstacle as an excuse as to why she cannot proceed with independently asserting herself to step forward and allow herself to succeed in an endeavor, a project, or a career. Now, Another very strong belief system that was per perpetuated through the ancestral line had to do with themes around money, scarcity, and being able to simply survive. With my ancestors on one side experiencing the, um, the, the downfall, the depression of the 30s, and the other side being victims of religious persecution and being survivors of Nazi Germany, they both experienced their famil family's financial wealth being taken away. This developed a belief system of lack and scarcity that simply life is hard and that one needs to fight for everything and you simply can't trust anyone. 
it perpetuated as an unspoken defensiveness of survival or an eat or be eaten attitude. And even though many in the family have had no blocks in accumulating money and being financially secure, there is a constant worry that there is simply not enough. And the continual mental replaying that institutions, groups, organizations are out to get you because you're a certain religion uh, or because you've got money and others want it. One can clearly see how the struggles and challenges of past generations cause many to unconsciously react and to behave. This day-to-day -day focus on having to survive took so many of us away and separated us from our divine, eternal natures, our inheritance that we would always be provided for, as abundance simply is our nature. We were full of worry and stress and tension on how we were going to survive. So what did we do? We worked harder. We worked longer hours. We controlled more and more of life. And we slipped further from our connection to source and being children of God as we were continually on the hamster wheel of competing, of competition. It's only through our reconnection to our divine eternal natures, which is unconditional love and forgiveness, that our programming system will finally be healed. You know, everyone, as I tuned into my generational healing, I addressed my ancestral line and I could energetically sense fear and uncertainty as to how they would feel opening themselves up to release this trapped energetic negativity that had always been a part of their lives. In fact, over the past 14 years through my practice Angel Healing House, I've seen this many times with my clients as they rationally they know this, they understand it intellectually, that certain behaviors and triggers are detrimental to their lives, but to let go of the only way of behaving that they have ever known is downright scary. So many times people would rather just hang on to what is known even though it is damaging to their lives, instead of opening to experience something new, something beautiful, and much more beneficial. Assuring them that they would remain who they were, but more peaceful, positive, optimistic, and joyful, I felt my ancestors' fears melting away as they opened themselves to shift the energies of fear of doubt, of lack, and scarcity once and for all. As I tuned in, the energy healing that I sent to my ancestors, it looked like sparkling electrical waves that were lighting up what seemed like dormant fuses as they started to spark and sputter and come back to life. The soul clearing that was happening was working to reprogram and, in a sense, to repattern whole generations going back and bringing light from, to, from dark limiting beliefs and default negativity to opening themselves up to step into the light and receive those radiant healing energies. You know, the smiles and the laughter and the downright gleeful giggles that I heard well, they sounded like a group of children being tickled. After I channeled healing to my ancestors and experienced their release, I noticed something unexpected. Their newly charged souls that were exuding this transformative, energetic flow. It not only was allowing their radiant light to shine fully, but I clearly saw that their unbridled energy was now flowing not only to the present generation living on, on the earth plane, <coughs> excuse me, but it was unstoppable as it catapulted and spread its illumination into future generations. So listeners, the Posse of Angels is asking us to shake our ancestral tree 
and see if there is anyone's energy that might still be affecting and triggering us to behave in a default setting of anything that is less than feeling abundant, free, wealthy, joyful, full of faith, peaceful, and unconditionally loving. You know, having now helped many clients with their generational healing of their ancestral line, this has created space inside of them to experience wonderful results in bringing alignment to many of their own relationships in this life. You know, many of those clients that have done that generational healing are now able to see a controlling, abusive father only through the eyes of love. They're now able to finally feel whole and they're able to forgive and release resentment and bitterness to being made to feel less than because of their gender or their choices when it comes to sexual partners. Many of those clients are now finally able to bring all of their feelings of anger and sadness towards a child who chooses to be estranged from them. They've, and this kind of generational healing helps them to bring that feeling they have for that estranged child back just to pure love. And many of those clients were able to forgive a controlling, abusive partner, boyfriend, or spouse. When we are clear and our energies are no longer affected by unresolved, dark, and negative energies from our past generations, we are clear and energetically free to heal ourselves. Our ancestors have been waiting for us to get to this very clear, high vibrational stage of pure love and forgiveness and immense light so that we can create a very different default programming of love for all to prosper and shine. You have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. After this short break, we'll be taking some of your calls for those free angel readings with myself and my wonderful angelic family, the Posse of Angels. If you want to call in for a free reading, do call in on 1-800-930-2819. We'll see you soon after the break. you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on Earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Huff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716, or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Hello, everyone. You are back with me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House radio. And today's topic is certainly getting a lot of interest um, as we have done so much clearing and cleansing and healing and bringing our own lives into divine alignment. We are finally ready to affect uh, and help 
those previous generations, our uh, ancestral line, to heal and to bring um, their default programming, which so much was of lack and scarcity and just surviving, uh, and bringing all of those energies back into divine alignment. So we've got some callers hanging on the line. Let's uh, let's go to them. If you would like to call in for one of those free angel readings, please do call in on 1-800-930-2819. Let's go to our first caller. We have Michelle. Michelle from... Oh, very close. You're you're a stone's throw away from me in Santa Monica in Marina Del Rey. Michelle, you're on the line with myself, Claire Candy Hoff. How are you today? How are you? I'm well. How are you, Candy? I'm really, really well. Nice to hear your voice. Nice to hear your voice. I was lucky enough to have a session with you several years ago, which kind of gave me a little bit of vision into my future in a lot of ways and it's been quite a journey along the way and I'm very grateful for what it is that you're doing and the like you're spreading the word and starting up these or having these very important conversations so thank, thank you on behalf of everyone listening and that that's lovely thank you so much for saying that Michelle you know um, I said uh, it's funny you bring that up because I said to an, uh, another person uh, we never know where the good we do uh, and uh, by by serving the divine inside of us where that's going uh, many of us <laughs> have been doing it uh, you know uh, tough for many years um, and uh, and we're not doing it for you know it's nice to have a roof over your head and to and eat, but, uh, you know, we're not doing it for the money, the fame, the success, or, you know, uh, to be lauded. Uh, we're doing it to share this wonder with these wonderful messages. And it's nice when we do hear back from someone like yourself, you know, and, uh, so thank you very much for making that comment. What has been going on in your world? Uh, you know what I say in lieu of all these, you know, like sex abuse, uh, you know, allegations and situations that have been coming up lately that I think we're all aware of. I think it really brings up, you know, I think a lot of people and a very large percentage of people, including myself, have had a lot of these experiences in life. And I think being a woman sometimes, and I think raised in a situation like that, we've learned how to suppress and to be silent and just kind of you know, make the best of it, and, I, you know, we do talk therapy traditionally in the past where, you know, we sit down and we talk about it, and, actually, and intellectually we're able to process it uh, and do forgiveness on that level, and then I've done a great deal of, you know, energy work and stuff like that as well, but I feel like after even, you know, diving down this kind of rabbit hole in a way for 12 years, that there's still blocks in there. And I think that sometimes, like, you know, a lot of the traumas can be remembered, but there's certain areas that, like, are not always that easy to recall. And how do how do we really shed and clear that completely? And I know you talk about, you know, genetic or generational traumas, and I know that this has been something that's gone on in my family for many generations and have meditated upon it and been able to see the you know, that line, but I still feel that blockage in myself that I can't completely release, and I know that there's a really profound story to share at some point in my life and have all of this turn into something very beautiful and not have it be that thing that defines myself or anyone else, for that matter, that's gone through these, you know, anything abusive, whether it's verbal or emotional, mental, sexual, physical, whatever it might be, it's a trauma, but it does have remnants that do stay in the energetic field. And how do we completely clear that Okay, and be able to it's, move forward and stand in that power? Okay. Thank, uh, I want, I want, first of all, I want you to th thank you so much for bringing this up because it's like the elephant in the room that, you know, people know is there and a lot of people don't want to address it. But the first thing when you were speaking is the posse of angels came through very strongly and they said, everything that happens to us in our physical incarnations is there to help our soul to grow. 
when we rise above our physical lives and when we see it, if you would, from an angel's perspective, from our contract um, in the Hall of the Akashic Records in our Book of Life, um, we, we have no idea what we might have to atone for in previous incarnations. And uh, we might have been abusers in our previous incarnations. We might have uh, we might yeah. have needed to really learn the lesson. And people say, oh no, that couldn't possibly have been me. You know, when, when we have no idea what we need to uh, experience in this lifetime. Um, and when we cross over and we go over our uh, contract in our book of life, we can see it, it we see it as more like a human game um, and and we don't take it as as seriously, or we don't. It doesn't have the same effect. We can see very clearly that it's there for our soul's growth. So the first thing that has helped my clients immeasurably, Michelle, is to understand that if this happened, that we co-created it in some way to help with our soul's growth. I myself. Uh, well, the former soul that was in the body, she contracted to be with her abusive husband for 26 years, 22 of them married. And, uh, and, I, and she knew that it was abusive after when she was standing under the traditional um, the canopy, Jewish canopy, getting married, that he was abusive. Yeah. Um, but her programming, yeah. her programming ran so deep. I speak about this in my, um, my book, um, one true home behind the veil of forgetfulness and its sequel. I am an angelic walk-in. Um, so I can see that very clearly. And so having taken responsibility and accountability for my co-creation of ha that happening in the, my life, it suddenly released the burden. It released the freedom of me blaming and being a victim. And that in, in and of itself started to release judgment around it. Um, and I, I said to the other person, please forgive me. Please forgive me for whatever my part was in this. I didn't do this for them. I did this for me because I chose not to be right. I chose to be happy. So that, Michelle, is, is one of the most important things that we need to understand if it's there for some reason we co-created it for our soul's growth let me go to the cards and see what comes out for the, for the lovely michelle in marina del rey no. um, let me see and the posse of angels are giving me a vision of you with a cap and gown of you graduating and they are saying you have done so so much work around this um, and every time that you have sought to you know surround this with healing and unconditional love and forgiveness that that went down your ancestral line and started to spark uh, different things um, you may not have been aware of this but you have certainly done a tremendous amount of work on this and they want, they're, they're actually applauding you for it. So it's a journey. Good. It's definitely a journey. <laughs> it is, a, it is a journey. Okay. The first card that's yeah. coming out for you is, is the magician. Uh, the magician is that card, meaning that you have everything inside of yourself to be able to transmute and transform this. Um, it, and they want you to know that it will never go away. It will never go away because the energy yeah. of it there is always there, but it's your perception and your attitude that will, uh, will soften it. And, on, and over time, you'll see it as, um, as something which helped your soul to grow. And by seeing that, you bless it, as in our sessions, you acknowledge it, you thank it, you bless it for you to release it. Yeah. And, and then you bring that back into divine alignment. Um, from there, uh, 
you've got the Page of Cups. Now, the Page of Cups, they're telling me in this in this situation, is yes. Have you written a book about your experiences? I that has been on me for several years to do so, <laughs> and uh, I've had many people to encourage me to do so. And I pick it up and I start and I close it, and then a year goes by and I do it again. But it has been weighing very heavily on me in the last six months, and I even like have images of different uh, pieces of that story. So that is there. That is just beginning. Okay. <laughs> What, the, the posse of because angels. I feel want, like <laughs> go on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the posse of angels want you to know that it it's going to be helpful to you to know that the book has already been written, and it's above your head. Yeah. It's it's already there. It's already there, and all you need to do is to honor and respect that that you are the vehicle, you are the channel in order to bring this book forth, and in bringing it forth. And you chose these experiences for your soul to grow, to serve yourself, and in writing the book, then you're gonna, then it's gonna be your calling card, and you're gonna go on to help so many others. But that I've can't. I've known that since I was yeah. a child. Yeah. That can't happen. I've known it was for a reason. But I was that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and that can't happen. You know, those people contacting you to be on interviews and to to speak about it and for those opportunities and all those things to happen unless the book is written. So it does take an inordinate amount of faith and courage. Um, and uh, when I started to write my autobiography, I am an angelic walk in. Um, I, you know, I wrote page after page after page and. And I had to get up and throw up, and I cried so hard that my my stomach hurt, and it was cathartic, and I laughed and I cried. Um, but in the end, um, I purged myself, and then I've heard from so many people that have told me this is my story too, and thank you for the courage for bringing this out, and it's helped so many people. A last card for you is, <laughs> I'm not surprised, is the justice card. Let the truth be known. Let the truth be known, yeah. um, and and then and then you will experience those um, connections and opportunities. So it's uh, it all comes it all comes down to, of course, your free will, but it's going to serve you in so many ways that you you can't even fathom, and uh, it's going to help you enormously. So I hope that's been helpful for you, Michelle. Very helpful and very uh, reassuring to stick the uh, to stay the line that I'm walking right now. So. Thank you All for right. that very much. All right. Well, sending you lots of love. Take care. You as well. Bye-bye. Beautiful call. Thank you so much, Michelle. Let's go to our next caller. We have Carrie. Carrie from California. You're speaking with Candy. How are you today? <laughs> Carrie, are you there? <laughs> Hello, 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 Carrie. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I thought your uh, talk was really interesting this morning in regards to the ancestral healing. Um, mm -hmm. I had a question of how I can help my children um, as much as possible in regards to. Um, the 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 uh, for their future, you know, in regards to like you know my ancestral past and then my husband's ancestral past. How is it that I can improve my children and break any blockages? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you so much for that, Carrie. Well, the first thing uh, that you uh, could do is to look back, as I look back into my ancestral line, and um, and find those areas. You can ask your ancestors to step forth and to listen to them. Um, you know, um, a lot of that previous generation were not listened to. 
they were not honored and respected for who they are. Children should be seen and not heard. Um, and one of the greatest things that you can do for your children is to honor and listen to them, to, to make uh, them feel uh, like they have something to say, like they have something to contribute, um, and to, you know, to honor their gifts and talents. For instance, in my generation, which was 1955, you know, back then children uh, were meant to uh, spew back facts, just repeat facts. Um, didn't matter what the, what the child was good in. Uh, they were often pushed in areas that they didn't want to study, they didn't want to learn. Um, and subsequently, you know, you had a whole, whole generations of uh, people dropping out and not being engaged with life. Um, uh, I love the, uh, the word educo in Greek because it actually doesn't mean to educate. It actually means to lead forth. So one of the most extraordinary things a teacher, a parent, parental figure can do is to find out what that child, the gift that God placed in their soul, um, what that is and polish it like a diamond to lead forth that gift from that child and they will shine. How old are your children? Ten and three. Okay. They are, uh, they would be, they would, they're certainly rainbow children. Uh, they might also have uh, aspects of uh, um, uh, crystal, the crystal children in them. Certainly the 10 year old might and the three year old being a rainbow child. They, they're highly, highly sensitive. They're highly telepathic. Uh, they have no karma. <laughs> to transcend and they come in knowing who they are and they come, in, they come in very empowered with a sense of self. The greatest thing that you can do as a conscious parent is to, um, um, is to enforce this in them. I would, I would highly recommend you to watch uh, a series that I was um, a guest speaker on um, as a featured healing practitioner and it's called The Children of the Rainbow. And it's, I think, 35 or 40 interviews with um, authorities around the world for children, for educators, on how best to, um, to feed and help these awakened children to thrive. But certainly um, for them to know that they are honored, they're respected, they're listened to, that their gifts and talents are, make a difference in the world. You know, uh, uh, they're like little adults, these children, and they come in knowing who they are and they have a great sense of self. And you as guardian of these children uh, is, to, is to make them feel comfortable in who they are and make them feel proud of who they are as well. So I think there's some wonderful messages in there. Um, and they want you to know that you're doing a wonderful job. You're doing a wonderful job as keeper of these beautiful souls. Let's go to the cards and see what comes out. First card that comes out is the Four of Pentacles. I love this card. And in regard to what you're speaking about, I always feel like I always forget I'm on camera. Uh, here's the Four of Pentacles, everyone. Somebody that's holding on to what they have too, too uh, tightly. Now, the Posse of Angels are saying that they, you have to... Um, uh, walk a fine line between holding your children too tight and letting the reins go. And that is something that you'll, you'll have to do until they're, uh, they're flying free, you know, from the home. But uh, uh, just observe whether you're holding them too tight or you're not, uh, you're letting them go uh, too, too loosely. And, and they want you to uh, just observe how, the, how you're doing that. Because sometimes we can hold too tightly and we can restrict and constrict our children as well. The next one that comes out is the two of pentacles. And that certainly is a card of being balanced. Um, know that you're doing a great job and allow your children to lead the way to show you what to do. And the next card is the card of the moon. And the moon card is, um, in this case, it's, uh, a, it's shining a light on those areas that 
you might have been holding them back or you might have have forgotten how important their gifts and talents is, talents really are. So uh, the Posse of Angels want you to know that you're doing a really good job and um, and you've by listening to your children, by honor, honoring and respecting their gifts and talents, um, you are you're creating this wonderful future for the planet. Uh, through the nurturing and nourishing of those children. So I hope that's been helpful. Very much so. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carrie. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Let's go to our third caller. We've got Beth. Beth, are you still on the line with us? Yes. Hi. 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 We've got about three or four minutes left. That was so strange because you were in the middle of doing the last appointment and all of a sudden you just called on me. It was That was very strange how that happened just now. <laughs> um, anyways, I think this topic is amazing because it makes me think of like epigenetics, you know, about how that we, we can heal the, the ancestral lines of genes that we carry, you know, and through our own choices and changes and forgiveness and all of that and so it's such a powerful time and so important, too. So um, since we're running out of time, can you just give me an angel reading? <laughs> I can, absolutely. Well, I'll go to, uh, I'll go, I'll go off tarot and I'll go to our wonderful cards here, which is the Oracle of E. And I will pull two cards, two cards to see what the messages are for our lovely Beth today. And uh, especially with all of this, um, talk out of Hollywood, all of these things that are being uncovered now. This comes from thousands upon thousands of layered years of patriarchal dominance and keeping women quiet and submissive. And it has to all come out. It has to all come out in order to be acknowledged, to be thanked for the contrast, in order to be blessed, in order to be healed. Let's get two cards here, one and two. The first one for our lovely Beth is knock, 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 knock. Who's there? <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Okay, let's see what knock, knock is. No, you aren't hearing things. The universe is sending signs and guidance, divine messengers, probably even neon billboards. Couldn't be a better time to answer the door and see who's come and knocking. While I was reading that, it is the number of five. It's the number of change. Um, and uh, they're saying uh, that they want to applaud you for hearing their knock-knock and by writing your book. <laughs> by really, by really attend, I know you're laughing, by, but they've heard, you've heard the knock-knock and by, by even giving a small amount every day to that book is an amazing energy. And along with that is an 11 number, is 39, which is laser beam. Bring your attention back to your center, back to your intention. You've been wavering a bit, but all it takes to achieve your desires is a little bit of concentration. Focus on what you want, then focus again for extra laser-like precision and clarity. Relish the sweet feeling of zeroing in on that finish line and... So these two cards go hand in hand, <laughs> and, they, and they're saying, thank wow. you. Thank you for listening to our knock-knock. <laughs> I'm laughing because before you answered, I was like, please don't tell me to keep working on my book. <laughs> No, well, this time, this, they, they know that they get more flies with honey than they do with vinegar, so they want, they're, they're saying, thank you, Beth, thank you for attending to your book, so I hope that's been helpful for you, sweetheart. That was so powerful, and, and thank you so much, that was so strange, I'm so glad you had a chance to take my call, thank you, I'm covered in goosebumps, or God bumps. <laughs> I love you so much, take care. Love you too, sweetie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
And that just about wraps up our show today. Thank you to all my lovely callers. Thank you to all the listeners out there. Thank you to your beautiful comments about the show. I certainly couldn't do this without you. Well, I could, <laughs> going out to an empty world, but thank you so much. It means so much to me. Once again, happy, an happy anniversary for tomorrow to my beloved Pete. And, uh, and if you are uh, looking for extraordinary holiday gifts, uh, I'll be speaking more about this as we get closer to Thanksgiving. One true home behind the veil of forgetfulness. I am an angelic walk-in. And certainly my third book, which is not within reach, um, which is Angels of Faith, all make extraordinary, extraordinary holiday gifts of wisdom, of laughter, of challenges and triumphs. So go to the Angel Healing House website, angelhealinghouse.com. Or you can always call 831-277-3716. And like always, I look forward to speaking with you again next week and to go out this week and fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. Love and as always, angel blessings. And I'll speak with you again next week. Take care. Bye.